Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christine and in this video I'm going to start a series of new lectures called Relational Algebra and in this video I'm going to talk about four fundamental relational algebra operations which are select, project, union and set difference. Now this is the sample database that I'm going to use for this. So the first thing is uh, this relation called instructor, which contains the ID of the instructor, the names of four instructors, their departments and their salaries. Then I have another relation called course and it contains uh, the ID of the course, the names of four different courses and the semesters. So I have, I've only included odd and even two types of semesters and the year in which those courses were taught. So this is another relation. So relations are nothing but tables. So sometimes uh, you might hear me referring to them as tables and sometimes relations. Both the things are same and we are going to be using the relational model so it's more appropriate to call them relations now. And then there are, there's this table called uh, teachers. This shows the relation between instructor and course. So what happens here is you have instructor ID one. And if you go and look in the instructor table, you will see that instructor ID one belongs to John. And then you see next to that, you can see the C underscore ID, which is the course ID. So that is two. So if you go and look at the course table, then two belongs to the course name DBMS that was taught in odd semester 2018. So that way you can know that John taught this particular course. And then if you look at ID two, you can see that it's Mark and Mark dot course number three, that is DS in odd 2018. And then you look at it and you can see four and four is Mary. So you can see that Mary dot DBMS in odd 2019. So that's how this relation is. And for the next couple of videos on relational algebra, this is what I'm going to use. Now the first operation that we are going to see is the fundamental operation called select. And it is used to apply conditions to select rows. So what that means is if you are given a table and you have several rows in that table, but you do not want all the rows, you just want to select some of those rows uh, by applying some condition. For example, you want uh, instructors who taught in some particular year or you want instructors who are from a particular department, then those types of conditions can be applied using the select operation. And it's a unary operator. So since we're studying relational algebra, it's going to look a little bit like mathematics. So in mathematics, you have unary and binary operators. And a unary operator is the one that takes one operand to work. So for example, if you had to do, um, let's say module, uh, module or find the absolute value of something, then you would have to provide only one operand. For example, minus three, and it returns to you positive value three. So you give only one number, that is a unary operation. But if you have operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, so those operations require two numbers, two operands. So in this case, we are going to see all these operations in terms of relations. So if you have a relation, then that relation is going to have, um, going to, uh, that, that operation is going to be applied on that relation. So you're going to supply a table here. And if you are supplying only one table, then it's a unary operator. And if you're supplying multiple tables, then it's a binary operator. So select is a unary operator. Okay, now what I want to find is all employees from the IT department. 
So this is my instructor table that I showed you earlier. And you can see that John and Mary are the two instructors from IT department. So the query is written like this. This symbol that you see here, right here, this is the sigma symbol, which is a Greek symbol, and it is used for the select operation. So this, you can read it as select. And then in subscript, we write down the condition. So the condition we want is that this department should be equal to IT. And then in the normal script, we are going to write down instructor. So instructor is the relation from where you want this particular data. So that is how this query is written. This is called a relational algebra query. And when you do this, obviously this is the result you get. Now this is all conceptual and logical. We don't really have a way of implementing this. So in order to implement all this, you'd have to learn SQL, which is structured query language and for which also I have made videos, but I'm going to release them later on. So these are, this is a relational algebra. And if you understand this very thoroughly, it will help you to understand this thing when, when it is performed practically. So this is very simple. Now, along with this Sigma operation, you can combine several other things. So this was my original query. And now I want employees of IT department, but with salary greater than 50,000. So we can see here that only Mary has got that type of a salary. So how to get that data? So this is how you can write your query. You can write depth equal to IT. And the symbol that you see right here, this is and. So if you invert this, then this becomes or. So when you're keeping the symbol like this, this is and. If you invert, it becomes or. So you're writing department equal to IT and salary greater than 50,000. This is another condition. And then you're passing instructor relation inside. So the result of this is only one row that is Mary with a salary of 70,000. So this is what the select operation looks like. Now the next fundamental operation in relational algebra is project. And project is used to select some columns to display. So select is used to display several rows that you want and project is used to select the columns that you want. So that's why project is slightly different conceptually. And then you have it again that this is also a unary operator. So you have to provide only one table for it to work. Now let's see an example. So this was the query we last wrote. And again, all these operations can be used together in one relational algebra query. So this was the query that we wrote the last time. And now we want to write a query that says, get only the names of all employees in IT department with salary greater than 50,000. We've already answered everything from here to here in this query. But now I do not want all the data. I only want the names of such people. So in that case, you can modify your query and write it in this manner. Now this symbol that you see here is the pi symbol, which is used in mathematics and it's a Greek symbol. And here we use it for the project operation. So what you do is you write down pi and then you write the name of the column that you want. So I only want the I underscore name, the instructor name column. So I'll mention that in subscript. And then in bracket, I will pass this whole entire query that I wrote previously. So that query is passed in the bracket. So the best way to understand this is when you write a query like this, like the one that's inside, it generates a relation, a new relation. And that relation looks like this one. And then what you're doing is you're passing this new relation to another operation that is pi. So that's how it actually works. You're creating a new relation every time you're applying an operation on some relation. Now, obviously the result of this is only one column with Mary here. So 
this is how pi works. You can select number of columns, you can write down comma and you can put a comma here and select as many columns as you want. And of course, if you want all the columns, you don't need to use pi at all. Now the next fundamental operation is union. And union is a binary operator. So it uses two tables. You have to provide two relations or two tables. And then when you provide those, the tuples of both are merged and the duplicate values are removed. And it can be used, now this is a very important condition for union. It says it can be used between two relations only if the number of attributes in both the relations is same and the domains of the attributes are also same. And the domain means the domain of an attribute is the set of permissible values for a given attribute. So that's what a domain means. Now, before I begin with an example, I'd like to tell you what union is. And you must have studied that in mathematics if you ever studied set theory. So this is what union looks like. If you have a set A with elements one and two, and you have a set B with elements two and three, then A union B will be one, two, and three. So it is the combination of A and B, but the duplicate values are removed. So two is coming twice, so it is removed. Now let's see the query. The query says, this, uh, this is what we want from this table, from the course table that I showed you earlier. We want names of all courses that are taught in either odd 2018 or odd 2019 or both. That's the question. Now you can see over here just manually how, what kind of courses you can get. So in odd 2019, there was only one DBMS. And in not 2018, there were two, DBMS and DS. Now let's see how to write the query. So we will divide this into two parts and write the query. So first part is this one. There, and whenever you read a relational algebra query, you start reading from inside. So start reading from inside. First of all, we are using the course table, so that is passed. Then outside of it, you can see that there is um, sigma. Sigma is used for select. And then there are columns here. So there's a column semester. And which semester do we want? We want the odd semester. We are trying to write a query for courses taught in odd 2018. So we are using the odd semester. And then we are mentioning the year. And in the year, we are mentioning 2018 for the first part. So this is the AND operation in between. And then we supply this relation. This will fetch for you this, uh, these two rows, these two rows with four columns. And that we supply to the pi operation outside. And for that, we are using only one column because we are asked to find only the names of the courses. So you can just supply here C underscore name. And then look at the query here. This is the same query written, rewritten actually. And the only difference is that here you have 2018 and here you have 2019 because the second part of the query says odd 2019. Now it says odd 2018 or odd 2019 or both. So this is an example of the operation called union. So we simply have to put this symbol in between the union symbol and it takes care of the union part, that is the odd 2018 or odd 2019 or both. Now, uh, what that looks like, so the query above will generate, like I said, DBMS and DS, both were taught in odd 2018. Union of that with just DBMS, which was taught in odd 2019. And that equals DBMS and DS, because when you take the union, DBMS is coming twice, but duplicates are removed. So you get only DBMS and DS. So this is what union operation looks like. 
Now the next fundamental operation that we are studying is the set difference operation. And this is also a binary operator like union. It also has this condition like the union operation and it's used to perform set difference between two relations. And what is set difference? It is where the tuples of the relation on the right side of the operator are removed if found from the relation on the left side of the operator. And I'll show you that in a minute with an example. Now, this condition again is repeated for set difference, just like union, that the number of attributes for both relations that you supply have to be same. And the set of permissible values, which are called domains, they have to be same for those attributes also. Now, what does the set difference look like in mathematics of set theory? So if you have a set, same example, A is equal to one and two, B is equal to two and three, then A minus B is equal to one. So what you are doing is whatever is present in A, which is also present in B, is removed. So that means A contains one and two and B contains two. So two is removed from A and whatever is left is uh, given as a result. Now B minus A on the other hand will be three because then you are removing two from B because it's present in A and you get the result three. Now let's see the query. This should be fairly easy to understand. Uh, it says names of all courses that were taught in odd 2018, but not odd 2019. So you want only those which were taught in odd 2018, but not odd 2019. So it's the same query that we wrote earlier. First, you find the courses taught in odd 2018, sorry. And for that, you put the um, column C underscore name because you only want the names. And then you find the courses taught in odd 2019 and fetch only the names. And of course, in between, you will put the minus operation. So what that looks like uh, is this. You have DBMS and DS. These two are selected by the first query, just like before. From this, you are subtracting only DBMS. So what happens is DBMS from here goes away. And as a result, what you get is DS. So that would be your result. So this is what set difference looks like. And I'll put up another video about the rest of the fundamental relational algebra operations. Thank you for watching.